Hello and welcome to the third part of the HTML tutorial series. Today we're going to look at images and how we can add an image to a web page. Now an image tag has several attributes that we'll be discussing and going through in detail, two of which are the width and height. Now the width and height can be both the percentage as well as pixels. These are measurements of the dimensions of the image. So we can actually override the dimensions of the existing image and we'll be talking about those in more detail as we go along. The, uh, the the other attribute that we we're going to talk about is the source of the image. Now the the image source can either be an external source, so that's an image on a separate website somewhere else on the internet, as well as an internal source. So that's internally to the website that you're working on. So that goes through the directories. But okay, let's uh, let's just jump into it. So. The, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just copy HTML tutorial 2 into the third tutorial file. Let's save that now, change a couple of bits around. So HTML tutorial 3, how to add uh, images to web pages. That's uh, fine. Oops, spelled that wrong. Uh, let's just remove this part here. And this tutorial demonstrates how to um, uh, embed images and uh, a talk on image attributes and there's going to be more attributes um, that I won't discuss in this video because it's going to be too long so I'm going to just do on some image attributes let's just save that and I'm going to just uh, go to the web browser just to ensure that uh, this is working, that's fine. So we've got HTML tutorial three, how to add images to web pages. This tutorial demonstrates how to embed images and a talk on some image attributes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now is we're gonna add an image to this web page and we're gonna put it in between this paragraph tag and this unordered list. And in, to do so, we need to use the IMG tag. So IMG stands for image in HTML. So let's go here, that's uh, in between the paragraph and the unordered list, and we do IMG like so. Now the image tag is a self-closing tag, which means we can do a backslash and then the closing tag symbol. Let's save that. Now, obviously we haven't actually added the source of the image here, so if I was to refresh this page now, it will look exactly the same, but there's a little bit of gap ready for the image to be added. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to um, add an attribute that represents the source of the image. And like I said, this can be an external source or this can be an internal source. For now though, we're just gonna focus on an internal image to this website. Now I have an image um, called uh, logo.png. Now that is in the current working directory of this tutorial. So this tutorial file, tutorial3.html, is in the same directory as this logo.png. Now that's very important and I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just close this file now. And to reference the source, we use something called src. So that's the attribute name, src. And we're gonna equal that to be logo.p ng let's save this now and go back into the browser refresh the page and we can see that we have this logo now this image that has been added um, now um, as you can see it's it's conforming to the original image dimension so that's the uh, original height and width of this image um, which uh, goes from there to here and then down like so but we can change this on the fly in the HTML so we can actually expand and stretch this image if we need to um, let's do that now let's change the image width so width is equal to, and I'm gonna remove this, or I'm gonna scale this down to be 200. So that's 200 pixels. Let's save this. Go back into the browser and refresh the page. We can see that it's now um, constrained to 200 pixels in width. Notice the height has changed. Because we haven't um, defined the height, the height ratio gets automatically calculated based on its width. Likewise, if we were to change the height, but not the width, it would do the same. So let's change that to be height and save that. Um, I'm gonna change that to be 100 instead, just to be a little bit more 
and Ventress. Let's refresh the page and we can see that the width has also changed because we've conformed, we've, we've enforced that the height is set to 100 and therefore the width dimension gets changed too in the same ratio um, as the original image but we can do something a little bit crazy we can actually change both the width and the height and stretch and uh, crop the or not crop stretch and um, um, uh, uh, compact the image um, on the fly as well let's do that so height of 100 I'm going to do width of um, if I spell that correctly that'd be great width of I'm going to do um, uh, 500 like so refresh the page and we can see that we've stretched this image out it's now 500 pixels but we're keeping we're enforcing the height to be 100 and we can we can uh, do it the other way so uh, we can do height of 10 for instance and width actually no I'll do width of 10 whoops height of uh, of 300 let's save that and refresh the page and as you can see we've completely distorted this image now this image is totally unreadable uh, but it's conforming to the rules that we've put into the image tag so regardless that the image itself has um, a set of dimensions the HTML has overridden those dimensions um, and likewise we can change this to be instead of pixels we can use percentages so let's do um, width here of 100% whoops like so and I'm just going to put height of 200 save that refresh the page and we can see that it's now spanning to be the whole width of the page um, and we're forcing the height as well let's just um, remove those put them back to the original so in fact I'm just going to do uh, width is 200 because that will move the height to be the correct height to width like so let's just refresh to bring it back to where it was okay so another thing that we can do is um, like I said meant before we can change the source so it reference an external file let's do that now so what I'm going to do is just go to uh, my blog and I'm going to take this image here so what I'm going to do is just open up the development uh, developer tools which is somewhere on here um, show web inspector there we go and um, you might not be able to see this because this is off of the page let's just uh, detach that so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better so um, what I need is this image here and if I do um, uh, edit the attribute I can now copy this attribute so that's the SRC tag that we've had added uh, in the previous tutorial if I copied that um, close this down going back to this tutorial let's just move that a little bit this way so you can see it um, what I can do is change that to be whoops and paste that in so that's actually referencing a external image so that's the gravatar image that I've got let's save this and go into here refresh this page and you can see that we've now changed the image to be this external image it's a bit blurry so what I'm going to do is just change the uh, width to be 96 I think that's probably the best width let's save that refresh the page and we can see that it's changed the width to be uh, 96 which makes it uh, look a little bit more clearer I'm going to just remove the width so it conforms to its original height and width I think it is 96 anyway yeah it is okay so the next thing we're going to do is also add a, what's called an alt tag now an alt tag is used by search engines um, to uh, find the alternative text so in some cases where the image doesn't actually load perhaps it's you're linking to an external image and the image gets removed then this t um, piece of text is the alternative representation of the image it's also used in things like screen readers as well um, 
so it has an accessibility benefit too also this is like i said it's used by search engines so it has a very good um, seo impact as well to your website um, so for example if you've you've got a website that is full of images maybe it's a portfolio website maybe it's an art website and you are, are uh, demonstrating or you're showing off your your uh, your art your images um, then or it could be even a product category catalog um, then do add some alt tags because they are uh, picked up by uh, uh, search engines as well let's do this now so let's uh, change or let's add an alt tag to this so alt is equal to and we're just going to do peter fisher let's save that now this isn't actually going to do anything on the on the at the moment because we have the image um, that's that's already uh, in place so if I was to save that refresh the page then nothing has actually changed because the image has been found however um, what we can do is uh, what I can do is demonstrate a failing image so let's say this is instead of gravatar.com which dot com dot um, x because it's not going to work now that image is not going to work because the the source is totally broken I've just put a, a dot X in front of the dot com which doesn't exist let's save that refresh the page and notice it's got this um, question mark symbol in like so but if I was to view the source of this um, this page and have a look at whoop that section here we can see that it has this alt tag now in certain browsers um, this will this word this uh, this alt tag will be shown instead of this um, this uh, question mark uh, which is useful for like I said with screen readers and it will also be picked up by uh, image searches as well so the the SEO crawling bots will be looking for the alt tags too let's however though put it back to how it was and all the way back to the start so logo.pung save that refresh the page okay so that is a quick tutorial on html images how to add images uh, a discussion on the source external sources and internal sources as well as changing the dimensions the height and the width using percentages as well as pixels and a brief explanation to alt tags why to use them and, and how to use them okay if you found this uh, tutorial helpful then please do give it a thumbs up if you've got any comments or questions or queries do put them in the comment section below and i will get back to you as soon as i can um, subscribe to get the next tutorials coming along as well as the web chats i do every week thanks again for watching and I shall see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.